Welcome to the Infinite Wealth Podcast. I'm Cameron Christensen, along with our co-host, Anthony Faso. And today we are diving into part two of our interview with Gary Wilson. And we're going to pick it up where he's talking about some of the lessons that he learned from REITs, real estate investment trusts, and some of the strategies that he was able to implement into his real estate portfolio. And part of what he's going to talk about is how he is able to scale his real estate business to increase the upside potential while decreasing the downside risk. He's going to wrap up this episode by preparing you and giving you guys some advice for those of you that are preparing for a market correction. Hope you enjoy this episode. Gary, one thing I'd like, I, I want to go back to the beginning of your story when you were 35 and in a year, you hit financial freedom, right? And we define that like Robert Kiyosaki, passive yeah. income is more than your monthly expenses. Yeah. But could you explain a little bit, like, how did you buy all those properties? I know you kind of mentioned some lines of credit. So how do yeah. you do it? And are those strategies still available today? Absolutely. Yeah. So first and foremost, I, you know, if, if I had an advantage, number one, it was because Socrates was my roommate and his dad was took me under his wings. But the fact that I was in um, banking, I was around a lot of money and a lot of, a lot of people that in a high net worth and that I wanted to be like them. Mm -hmm. And I realized, you know, they, those guys weren't going out drinking beer at lunch. Okay. They were, they were always working. And, and I will admit I'm a, I'm a workaholic, but uh, I decided to go up to the, the, the library. So when I'm studying, I'm investing my money and I was in the 401k fully maxed out in the 401k, but I was also buying shares of mutual funds. Okay. And I know there's, this is not a real estate related lesson, but I'll tell you what, guys, anybody can do it. What you do is you got to get away from tracking mutual fund performance because it's in the past. What you want to track is the management team. The management team is the key. The good management teams, they get hired away. They, they do. And you track the management teams. Always when you look at top performing funds, see who the management teams are and you can see these guys were at this company 10 years ago, then they were at this company seven years ago, this company three years, and everywhere they went, they they rocked it. So I went with the with the management teams and I was able to always better or best 20% on an annual basis. So so fast forward, I managed to save up in non-retirement money fifty thousand dollars in my early years. Fifty thousand bucks. Did that in probably five years, you know. Um and that's what I started using initially to buy, um, buy my properties for the down payment. It was very scary. I hated to do it, but I but I remember looking at the banking, looking at the rules, and looking at hard money. I thought, well, the best deal is to go in with some cash, number one, and then I get a better rate and term for the bank, number two. And I thought at the end of the day, my cost of borrowing is less, so I have more cash flow, and that's why that's why I did that, guys. I used my cash, bought three properties with the fifty thousand. And I had a total of um, 11 units, four, two fourplexes and a threeplex, 11 units. And it was well worth it. The cash flow far outweighed. I mean, I was making my money back in, in, in droves. Then what I did is I took out a hood. Then I had confidence. So everybody told me in the beginning, get, do a line of credit on your home. I thought, I'm not going to put my family at risk like that. Well, after three properties, I realized, you know, if you just apply some simple logic, this is an easy business. So I got a line of credit on my home, forty thousand dollars. Went out and bought uh, probably three more properties. Um, the fourplexes were the most expensive. The other ones were more like three plexes, two plexes, things like that. Exhausted those proceeds, then I went out and got what's called a personal line of credit. Now that I established myself as a creditworthy person, banks will give you what's called they used to call it a signature loan. It's just basically. Yeah. Same thing as a credit card, it's not attached to any tangible asset, it's attached to your reputation, but it's a checking account. I got the right checks, put out and bought probably two more properties with that. Um, now, all the while, I'm bankrolling my cash flow, right? So after about six months in, I had enough cash flow, I could go out and start buying, using the, my excess cash flow to put down more down payments. <laughs> okay. And that's at the end of the year, I probably put down... I probably bought um, probably four properties and the money I used for down payments came from the prior six properties that I just bought within the last six months, six to 12 months. 
And so now the machine was starting to feed itself. Okay. Um, and that's when I got that, that, that big blanket mortgage. So, so a couple lessons here. Um, I know there's a lot of, we call them late night gurus or the infomercial guys that'll say, don't ever use any of your own money. And then you'll never, you'll never, uh, you'll never lose anything. And I'm like, you know, if it sounds good to be true, it probably is. So I studied that and I, was, I started meeting people who were doing that. They almost never succeeded. They always had debt up to their eyeballs, right? They had, instead of like today, instead of 4% mortgages, they had 12% mortgages. This is you know, relative. Back then it was 15%. They were getting hard money loans. It's called hard for a reason, right? The terms are hard, it's expensive. And I thought to myself, what's the point of not having any money down if you're not cash flowing, you had now you got no equity and you got no cash flow. Now you're working. You got to take care of the property. Yeah. And I thought I'd rather have the equity and the cash flow and show something on my books. So when I go to the banks, I, I look like I'm, I'm I'm profiting. And this is really important, too, by the way. Everybody listening, just remember this. If you start doing all that no money down stuff and you know doing hard money loans, I promise you, you'll have a hard time getting mortgages, traditional mortgages which is where the cheapest money is. So, so do it the right way from the beginning. Build a solid foundation of equity and cash flow, and then the banks will start calling you, which is exactly what happened. My second year in, when I took the, the, the year off, I can't tell you how many times bankers will call me and say, hey, we'd like to take you to lunch. You know, We'd like to have you use us for your next loan. And I, would, I kept saying, I don't, I'm not borrowing any money right now. And that drove them crazy. They didn't take me to more lunches, <laughs> you know? So in any case, um, what I'm getting at is uh, put yourself in a position where you, you are a credit worthy person, you're, you're cash flowing, you have equity. That's what banks want to see, you know? Um, and at the end of the day, I'll kind of describe this to you in a, um, a tangible structure. Think of a staircase, okay? So what I started doing was, <clears throat> Um, by the way, Dave Ramsey calls this a snowball rolling uphill, right? And what I would do is I would pay then, I was start, I was started paying off my properties. I would take the one that was easiest to pay off, either the the, you know, the smallest payment or the lowest the smallest principal balance, and paid off as fast as I could, which got rid of the debt, which is a which is a which is an upside, a positive thing, and also had more now I had more cash flow, which is another positive thing. So I increased my upside potential, reduced the downside risk. And if you remember those two terms, use those terms when you talk to bankers. Tell them, you know, your your game plan is to to maximize upside potential, minimize downside risk. Because internally in banks, those are the terms they use. They're looking at you and they're determined. Do you increase upside potential or do you minimize downside risk to them? They're risk averse. So in any case, what I'm getting at is, Pay, pay off a property, had more cash flow. So I had more cash flow to apply to the next property, right? Pay that off and have more cash flow to apply to the next property. That's the snowball rolling uphill. And the one of the keys is I never took a dime out for myself. I did that for five years before I finally retired from the bank. And I had enough cash, I had enough cash flow to, to live the lifestyle we, we wanted, plus, plus more. We had enough capital to in cash enough capital to do four properties, pr purchase plus remodeling in cash. Um, that was my that was my threshold. I had it accomplished earlier, um, but my my one of my attorney my attorney became one of my best friends, and he's more concerned than I was. He said, "Gary, why would you give up this this cushy job you got at the bank with all those perks, and you're you're still making all the money on the side?" And I said, "Cliff, because I'm I'm killing myself spiritually. I'm I'm like I'm sacrificing sleep." I'm losing, missing time with my wife. I'm, you know, trying to figure out how to spend time with the kids on the weekends. I said, I'm tired of it. Plus I was tired of the, the, the corporate politics. I just, I just hated that corporate environment. And uh, that, when I did that guys, well, I got to tell you, this is a funny story, by the way, the year I, the year I resigned, which was August 13th, 2003, the prior December, and I'm not going to mention the bank because I don't want a bad mouth, and they're a good bank. For the first time in the bank's history, this was a big bank, they announced a layoff the week of Christmas. Now, I was in IT. We did mergers and acquisitions. I knew the numbers, and the numbers were good. And they called all the, the managers in 5 o'clock on a Tuesday. Christmas was on a Friday. 
And I thought, this is going to be awesome. We're going to give people bonuses, you know, for Christmas. Mm. That's not what they announced. They announced the first layoff in company history. And they went around us. They didn't include us in the discussions. They went around us, used the consultant to look at the employee reviews to pick who they're going to lay off. So I lost four people. I was a tough manager, but two of them were mistakes. I said, I, I'm going to work at six in the morning with my boss, Bob. And I said, Bob, I agree with two of them. The other two were mistakes, and we were able to save them. We, we found them jobs elsewhere in the bank. But I told him at that morning, I said, Bob, I'm doing this because I'm, I'm going to tow the company line because I'm you're paying me to do this. But I disagree with it. I disagree with the way you went about it. It's wrong. And why on earth would you pick Christmas week? It's because it was the end of the year. And they were, they were going to announce it. And, of course, Wall Street will reward them with greater valuations, right? So in any case, it, 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 eight months later, eight months, it, I was able to resign. And I never forget, I'm walking out the front, the front of the live, the big, you know, 42 story USX tower with my, I'm sweating because I was loading up my boxes, my short sleeves are rolled up, my ties loose. And I go down to the, the ramp to the street where I cross over and there's these guys next to me in their, in their three piece suits saying, oh man, we feel so bad for you. Can we help you carry your boxes to your car? And I looked at them and I said, no, I'm okay. And they said, they said, it's really, I said, I said, yeah. And they said, you you just got laid off. And I said, no, I just retired. <laughs> nice, nice. That had to yeah. feel good. Yeah. Well, that was. Uh, I, I walked. Well, man, I got in my car, took off. I I couldn't contain myself. The challenge was, I felt guilty after a while because my neighbors are going off to work every morning, and I'm sitting there on the deck with a cup of coffee and reading the paper. And I actually worked harder that next year than I ever worked in my life because I couldn't get used to not working. Mm -hmm. And um, did seven. At one point, I had seventeen flips going on at the same time. That's ridiculous. Don't ever attempt that. that for everybody listening, <laughs> that's one of those don't do this at home kind of things. I, I just, you know, had to stay busy and uh, found myself doing other things uh, with, with the family and, and uh, my local church and things like that and Boy Scouts. And um, I've, I found what to do with my time. And um, man, I tell you, looking back, I, I, I still today, I get goosebumps thinking about it, you know. So and it really is. It really does happen. I'm not the only one. You know, I, I met thousands of other people over the years and mastermind groups. And um, I'm, I'm telling you, there's a process for it, just like there's a process to learn how to be an accountant or an attorney or an architect or a, a engineer. You learn the process like you learn anything else. And if you're willing to learn and apply the principles and be disciplined, you got to be disciplined. Um, you got to be ambitious. You got to be willing to, to take action. I mean, my gosh, you can't, you know, you can be the smartest person on the planet and study all you want, but you've got to get in the game and swing the bat. And that's probably one thing I see people fail at, guys, is I'll, you know, I can teach you how to, like, I can teach you how to build wealth and income. But if you don't take action, it's the one thing you have to do yourself. It just makes you a more intelligent person, not wealthy. And I know plenty of really smart, poor people. They're called professors. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got to throw that out there, but. I know people with four degrees and everything. I'm proud. I got four degrees, man, a doctor, a master's. And I like, but you're living in a shack, you know? Um, so in any case, I, I hope I just didn't offend anybody, but, it, but it's true, you know? So get in the game, swing the bat. I don't care if you're a high school dropout. You know, I can tell you stories about people I've met that never even finished high school, you know, but they are smart. So Gary, for somebody that's listening and wants to take action, uh, where can they go? What resources do you provide? Well, there's there's a bunch of bunch of ways to learn. I'm a little bit different because I always lead with education. So my philosophy is education, the right education plus the right information plus right action equals right results. So what I like to do is is give people some basic stuff in the beginning. So if anybody wants to just go to just go to uh, realestatewithgarywilson.com, okay? It's really easy. And up where it's uh, on the top, we have all the choices. Click on, don't, don't do anything on the first page. The first page is just designed to get you to download a five-page free book. You can do that if you want. There's five of them, six of them there. But up on the right-hand corner, click on members area. I know you're not a member right now, but on the right-hand side of that page is an option to get in for 30 days for free. Okay? And in other words, you can get in, you can listen to our Monday night classes for free. You can download all kinds of material for free. And I'm thinking, my gosh, I'm basically giving you the farm. 
but you got 30 days. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna require you to take action. But go in there and click on members area. The next page you'll see on the left. If you're a member, you know what to do. On the right, if you're not, you just click on and follow the instructions. And uh, uh, the admin people will let you in for free. And um, you can even oh, there's another thing you can click on. It says work with me. So what I do is I like to interview people. I don't I don't. Um, this is gonna probably break some hearts here, but I don't really coach directly one-on-one -on -one like I used to. It's extremely time consuming. What I do is I, I, I have a group of agents we call investor agents. I've trained these real estate agents to work with us investors. They're not traditional agents. So they're not gonna just look at the pretty carpet and try to get mm -hmm. to make an offer. They have all the tools I have. I've taught them, I trained them how to find the properties. The, these are off market deals for the most part how to analyze them, how to negotiate them with their clients who are typically professionals and business owners. So if you do nothing else, um, go on there and go to the community site or better yet, just do the click on the work with me form. And what I'll do is I'll interview you and then I'll sign you to one of the agents and we've got them all over. There's 24 states we're in with the investor agents. They, they have to be certified to work with you. In fact, we're the only place they can get the certification. Um, and if you're one of the few that are really, you know, higher end, uh, you're, you're moving up the ladder, I will take those folks on one-on-one, -on -one, but only do one at a time. Right now, I've, I've got one right now I'm working with, um, his name's Benny. But for the most part, good old fashioned investing, these guys that I've trained, they're investors too. They, they know what to do. And it's, it's a, it's a huge advantage to you. So, so get the, do the members area, get the uh, free information. Click on the work with me form, just fill it out. So I have some information on you. I'll interview you, see where you are, and I'll know the right person to assign you to. And by the way, if you do want access to me, I'll give you a hint. It's through the investor agents. <laughs> they know how to set up calls with me on an ongoing basis, and they'll set up joint calls. This happens all the time. So I'm training the agent, and I'm also training the investor at the same time. That is a worthwhile endeavor for me, and that, that's sort of my passion. So, yeah. You know, Gary, you you kind of skated over the members area, right? Well, oh. What are some of the things uh, we can learn okay. in the members area? Well, not everybody's probably to click on on that one, I tell you. So number one, there's a library of videos in there that I've recorded personally. I, I do these mo <laughs> Monday night classes called Monday Night Live. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it for five, six years now. So there's over 300 videos that you can download, not just watch online, actually literally download it right, for free. And it's yours forever. It's on your computer. There's another section called resources. These are all the websites we use when we're analyzing people and properties. You can track money movement across states from, from the where money's leaving, where it's going to. You can, you can find any information you want on any person in your property. That's the resource section. Another section is our tools. We have calculators, spreadsheets, analysis forms, information forms. Um, you know, everything you need to analyze properties flipping for flipping and renting. There's also a marketing section, which is really for the investor agents, but there's 20 campaigns in there. And there's all kinds of stuff in there. Can nurturing campaigns with short little videos with downloads, forms, contracts, things like that. I mean, it's, it's literally our internal library. Um, and what's funny is I, I learned from experience that I can tell 100 people to do this and maybe one will do it. So I'm not afraid of anybody, you know, trying to compete with me. Mm -hmm. There's plenty to go around. Um, everything's copyright protected, um, but it's available. I'm a, the, the arrangements I have with the publishers, I'm allowed to give away my own information for free. Well, as long as they come through the, the website, I can't. I can't compete with the people who sell the products. There's people that sell our training programs and our books. I mean, I'm telling you, if you want to stuff for free, go to the website, come, come to me because I can do it. <laughs> I, I have that right in my contract. Um, so that's in there. There's also a, um, let's see here. Um, oh, books. So there's a, there's a tab called books. And in there you'll see premier books. Those are the first five books I wrote. I've got seven books now. And they're all about 150 pages on average in specific subjects like wholesaling, flipping, buying rentals, managing rentals. So you can grab those for free. You can get the downloads for free. Otherwise, you got to go to Amazon and, and pay them, you know. So it's literally it's literally like like you kid going down to the Christmas tree on Christmas. Yeah. And it was like everything you asked for, 
that's what it's like. <laughs> Now, Gary, man, I, I know we need to wrap up because you, you have another meeting to get to. So we appreciate your time. Sure. I got to ask another question. It's a little off topic, right? Mm-hmm. But when you told me your best friend from college in the late 80s was Socrates, yeah. did you ever call him Socrates? Right. Yes. Cause, right. Because it, yeah. with, just to clarify, I mean, that's where Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure came out. <laughs> right. Yeah. But yeah. You had to call them Socrates, right? Well, actually, actually, a lot of the guys on the dorm floor, they did. They they didn't know how to pronounce it, um, Socrates. But I always call them. We just call. I just call them Sock. You know, okay. For, for Socrates, and uh, um, one of the greatest guys you could ever meet. He's very private. Uh, lives in Florida and got a one of the beautiful old mahogany uh, boats, the wooden boats, like for the I think it's Chris Craft or something. Just a beautiful. Thing is just uh, is one of the most laid back people I've ever met. I never, by the way, I was down there one time visiting in 2009, and we're out on the intercoastal waterway, looking out over at the at the barrier strip of sand with all these condos. These big buildings had them, these banners that said "Buy one get one free," and he said, "You know what that means?" And I said, "Was it like a I don't know? I mean, lawn furniture or something?" He said, "No, condos. Buy one get one free." You got to be kidding me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, It'll happen again. What we're going through right now, guys, is I'm a very positive, optimistic person, believe me. But forget what forget the television, turn it off, because if you just study economics, you'll find out whenever a market is overheating like it is way beyond expect. I mean, people are outbidding each other, waiving contingencies. Just we call it silly money. And real inflation is right now at 10%. When you, it's just what we call the, the, the America's breadbasket, what we need, you know, food, shelter, clothing, gasoline, it's all increasing at 10%. 10% is an astronomical inflation rate. Mm-hmm. And the economy will not keep going like that. It's, it's going to turn. And I want to scare you. What I'm going to do is prepare you. So yeah, this is going to be my fifth cycle. The first three, I stumbled through it like everybody. The fourth one, which was the last one in 2007 through 11, I knew what to do. And our, our business grew sixfold in the first three years of the recession because I knew what I was not nervous. I was not scared. I saw it. I knew exactly what's happening. Same thing's happening now. I, I wish I could tell you it's next month or next year. Nobody knows that. It's whenever the market decides. But I'm telling you right now, there's early signs it's already deciding. So I've never seen a, a, an up market not go down. But I've also never seen a down market not go back up. So don't be nervous. Don't be scared. Prepare yourself. Get the education. Train yourself. If you're a real estate agent listening to this, man, you need you need to do the work with me for them. Okay, you're probably you're probably more of a traditional agent, right? Open houses, night showings, cold calling, all that kind of stuff. I'm telling you, there is a much better way. You work with investors the way we teach you. You're going to make an average of four commissions per client, not one, but four. Mm. Okay, and it'll position you to invest yourself. You've got for if your agents or any agents listening, I, I can't even describe to you and, and articulate in strong enough words why you need to take this seriously. Because when the recession hits, guys, the owner occupant business is going to drop off like a lead balloon, but the investors will keep on going, just like they, they we never stop investing, right? Um, but in any case, uh, uh, the good news is, is when you understand the market, you know how to prepare for it. It's nothing to be scared of. It's something to prepare prepare for. You know? so. Awesome. Thanks, Gary. And uh, we look forward to having you kind of continue this conversation. We're going to bring you back this summer for our Financial Freedom uh, Summer Series. So uh, awesome. we'll certainly, certainly continue this information there, but uh, we'll be sure to add all the links in the show notes. Uh, so that everybody can get a hold of you. Thanks again, Gary. You're welcome, guys. A pleasure to do it, and uh, I thank you for having me on. Uh, and uh, I um, love the opportunity to teach and preach. You know. Awesome. Thanks, Gary. Uh, go yeah. make it a fantastic day. Take you care. You got it. You too.